Well, good afternoon. More than two years ago, the 4G leadership chose me to lead the team. We have bonded as a team and have worked well together since. COVID-19 struck last year. The pandemic is still raging worldwide, and many expect this to be a prolonged crisis. The virus has also accelerated significant structural shifts, such as strategic competition between major powers, discontent with globalization, and the digital revolution. Also, we must deal with the challenges of an aging population and a desire for greater diversity in politics. Our top priority is to deal with the immediate crisis and keep our people safe. I thank PM for his commitment to stay on until the crisis is over, so that he hands over a Singapore that is in good working order to the next leader. The next Prime Minister should have a sufficiently long runway to master the demands of leading our nation, formulate and see through our longer-term strategies, and win the confidence and support of Singaporeans to build this shared future together. This year, I'm 60. I will be close to the mid-60s when the crisis is over. Now, when I also consider the ages at which our first three prime ministers have taken on the job, I would have too short a runway should I become the next prime minister then. We need a leader who not only who will not only rebuild Singapore post-COVID-19, but also lead the next phase of our nation-building efforts. When I had a stroke in 2016, with the great work of my medical team and the care and encouragement of my family, friends, colleagues and fellow Singaporeans, I recovered fully. Having worked with PM, ESM and MM, I know that the top job imposes exceptional demands on the office holder. It is in a very different post-COVID world, the demands will be even more exacting. While I'm in good health today, it is in the best interest of the nation for someone who is younger to tackle the huge challenges ahead. After careful deliberation and discussion with my family, I've decided to step aside as leader of the 4G team so that a younger leader who will have a longer runway can take over. You know, when I stood in the election in 2011, it was not with the ambition to become the Prime Minister. In fact, I did not even ask what appointments I would get. I think PM very uh, gracefully, I mean, appointed me as a minister, education minister, straight away. But I did not ask what appointments I would get. When, you know, I grew up in a kampong, and the first time I saw the borders of Singapore was when I left Singapore for my overseas study in the UK. The first time I was on a plane, the first time that I used a fork and knife. Now, so, you know, I, my life has been uplifted in significant ways. So has been my family and those of, you know, my friends in school. So, you know, when I was asked, so I've been in public service since the age of 19 and I've been serving in various capacity throughout. Uh, so when I was asked, in fact, several times, I, each time I turned down, but eventually I contested in the 2011 election. Now, I believe that Singapore politics should not be about self, but what is good for Singapore and how we can continue to create the conditions for our people to continue to uplift themselves, just as I have been uplifted. And which was why when PM appointed me as Education Minister, I was delighted because uh, you know, the future of our nation is in, our, is in giving our children the best possible education that you know, we can give. So, 
Singapore politics is not about self, but what is good for Singapore. And I've been constantly thinking of what is in the best interest of Singapore and Singaporeans. And whether it is to, in Singapore's best interest if the runway for the Prime Minister is too short. And this is especially so in a post-COVID world, because I think the disruptions brought about by COVID will be very significant. So I appreciate the, I appreciate the support of Singaporeans and have made the decision with the best interests of the nation and our people at heart. So together with PM and the senior ministers, I'll continue to mentor the younger ministers as the 4G develops and identify another leader from among them. I'll remain as Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies, as well as as Chairman National Research Foundation. I'll continue to do my best in the service of Singapore and Singaporeans. Thank you.